Hey everybody, it's Courtney from Creative Bug and we're live like we always are on Tuesdays and Thursdays. This is the first time you're joining us. You can follow us if you're following along on your um, phone or mobile device and that way you'll get a notification every time we go live. Be sure to like and share our page. And if you miss something that we've posted either today, you join us a little bit later, or maybe you want to check something that we posted before, you can always see that on our videos tab and on CBTV. And today I thought I would do something that appeals to my sort of six-year-old self. I've been feeling like being an adult is really hard recently, and so I thought I would play with some shrinky dinks and show you how to make a really cute cake topper. Now this is the perfect topper for cupcakes or any cake, so if you haven't um, checked out any of our Wilton's classes, you totally should. And we're doing a promo where you can put in Facebook 30 and get 30 free days of Creative Bug. That gives you access to all 700 plus of our classes. You can enjoy those Wilton classes, step up your cake decorating game, your baking game. You can learn how to make those perfect um, cupcakes. I know school's back in session now, so a lot of kids' birthday parties are happening. So you can do these little cake toppers um, and you can reuse them year after year, which is really fun. The materials you'll need for this are some shrinky dink film or paper. And this is really special. It's sort of like a type of plastic. Usually comes in a package of eight and a half by 11 sheets and there are several kinds. There's a clear kind where it's just um, a clear acetate looking sheet, clear on both sides. The one that I love to use is called Rough and Ready. And one side is clear and the back is sanded. That's what they describe it as. It's a rough texture, slightly frosted. And this allows me to use both permanent marker and colored pencil, which gives us a really pretty and kind of artistic look, which I'm gonna show you how to do in just a minute. And this is my preferred type of shrinky dink. And I've been making these with my friends Sanjay and Jenny. Every time we do mini course every year, we work with a bunch of teenagers to make shrinky dink jewelry. If you've never made shrinky dink jewelry, we also have a class for that. That's taught by um, Nicole Blum, and the link for that's gonna be posted in just a minute. So you're gonna need some of these. This is ideal for a toaster oven project, but you could also do this in your regular oven. Every shrinky dink film will have um, instructions on the baking on the back. So just make sure, depending on which kind of film you're using, you follow those baking instructions. It's also nice to have a little bit of parchment paper. I'm using some from Wilton's, which I love. I also have a little spatula handy. And then some kind of grippers or some kind of pot holder because you are gonna be taking this baking tray out of the toaster oven or out of the oven while it's warm. So you need to have these on hand. And there are a few little troubleshooting tips I'm gonna share with you along the way. So having something to protect your fingertips is really handy. Also have a bunch of really fun colored pencils. I've got a whole array of Sharpies that I can use. And then I also have a couple of these like coffee stirs. And you'll see when we make our shrinky dink, sometimes they, well always, they curl up and then they relax. And there's this tiny moment of panic where things look like they might be sticking. And if you need to fuss a little, you can use one of these without burning your fingertips and get in there and make everything lie flat. Now you do have to preheat your oven. At least that's what it recommends on the back of the shrinky dink film. So that's what we're gonna to do to start. I just have a basic toaster oven. I have the tray that we're gonna put our shrinky dinks on out of the oven. And I'm just gonna turn the dial. The temperature is set to 325, which is what's recommended on my package. So you might hear some ticking because that's how this toaster oven works. But I just want this going. So it's warming while we're gonna work on our image. Now the cool thing about this frosted is that you can still see through it, which means I can trace an image. This is ideal for people who can't draw but really wanna make a cute cake topper. And I think working with vintage imagery is really fun or things from kids' book illustrations. Things like vintage kids' books also work really nicely. So I have Peter Cottontail here. I think I wanna do this tiger. And I'm gonna center him in the middle of the page. Now I could try to economize and do this on the side and that's fine too, but I'm actually gonna add some little tabs at the bottom of his feet so that there is a permanent place for this to stick into the cake. So I don't have to add anything else, I don't have to glue any toothpicks onto the bottom of my image. I'm just gonna make it part of my full image. So I wanna leave a little more room. And I'm starting with just a black Sharpie and I'm drawing on the glossy side. So that's important. And you could do a line, you could do sketchy lines. We're gonna be cutting this out, so you'll need some sharp scissors. And we're gonna be, I like to cut outside of the line, not on the line so that I can retain some more sketchy marks. But if you wanna do just a solid line, that's fine too. I'm not being too precious about this. I like the sketchy look of this. Remember, we're 
live too. Oh yeah, guys, Brian's reminding me that we're live, which means you can write in and ask questions, so feel free to do so. If you're joining us now, like and share the Facebook page so that you get notifications. You can hit that follow button on your mobile device. That way you never miss a live shoot. And if you did miss it, you can go back and watch it on our videos tab or on CBTV. CBTV. And I am making a Shrinky Dink cake topper. And right now I'm using my frosted Shrinky Dink film and a vintage image of a tiger. If you have any questions, just let us know and Allison will ask them to me and then I'll repeat them and then hopefully answer your questions. Sometimes people have questions about um, what kind of imagery you can use. You can look on Pinterest and on Google for copyright free imagery. There's something called Graphics Fairy, which has a lot of fun vintage clip art that you can use. I found this image um, just under free clip art vintage tiger. I knew I owned a tiger. We have our first question. Allison said there's a question. Yes. Cynthia wants to know how do you know how small the image will be? <gasps> Excellent question, Cynthia. Thank you for asking this question. The question was, how much is this going to shrink? The packaging says that this will shrink about a third of the original image. But just to give you a hint of where we're headed, that's my tiger. He's not fully drawn. But if you look at my original image here, I'll do this here so you can see it. This, is, this size became this size. So I would say it's probably a little bit more than a third. I like to draw it as big as I possibly can. The other thing to remember when you're doing this, um, before you pop it in the oven, if you want to punch a hole in it because you're making jewelry or something other than a cake topper, you need to do that before it's baked because as it shrinks, the plastic becomes very thick. Good question. So yeah, draw it a little bit bigger than you intend it to be. I'm just tracing using my Sharpie. I'm working on the glossy side of the paper. The back side is frosted and we're going to color that in with our colored pencils in just a minute. Now something like his whiskers on this negative side, I'm not going to draw that in because I don't want to have to cut around it. I'm not worried about that. I can just do some whiskers on the side of his face and that's enough suggestion for me. I'm going to do some of his little tiger stripes here. You can have as little or as much detail as you want. I'm going to show you some other ones I did earlier today too in just a minute. I think this would be just so much fun with like kids book imagery, your kids favorite storybook character, if you have a kid or a little one in your life. Or for an adult, I'm already thinking about all my girlfriends so I can make these for their birthdays. I've also got the toaster oven going so that it's heating up. Shrinky Dink recommends that you're using a preheated oven. Almost all my stripes are in there. We're getting close. You definitely want to make sure you have all your marks before you bake this. Okay, I think that's good. I'm going to keep my photo or clip art image kind of close so I can refer to it for color. And I'm not going to color on the front side that's glossy because I'm going to use colored pencil. So I need to flip this over and color on the back side. It's textured, it's gonna take the colored pencil really nicely. And because I've already made an orange tiger, I thought this time I would make a blue tiger. Oh, and before I do that, I think you should have a party hat. So let's just draw that real quick on the front so I can color it in on the back. We have another question. Yes, we have another question. Oh yeah, good question, Eliza. Hi Eliza, thank you for writing your question. Um, Eliza's asking what's the website that has good um, vintage images and that is Graphics Fairy. That was just my timer because I was preheating my oven. I don't need to set it again, it's pretty warm so we're gonna pop this in here in just a minute but I just wanna color my tiger. Uh, Graphics Fairy is the name of the website where you can find vintage copyright free imagery. Dover is another great source. They make books, and if you sign up for their newsletter, they send one page of copyright-free vintage imagery a week to you in your inbox, so that's a good resource. This is kind of a turquoise tiger. You'll see, too, that um, as this shrinks, the color will become kind of denser and really saturated, which I love. It takes the colored pencil so, so well. 
I'm not referring to my original image too much because I'm making this tiger blue-green. He could be purple. He could be whatever color you like. I'm gonna go back in with some blue. This would be a fun thing for kids to do at this stage. You could do the drawing or the tracing and then they could do the coloring. You can see that I'm not being precious about this at all. But I think it's gonna be really fun to have a blue tiger to go with the orange tiger I made earlier. And when we're done coloring this guy, we're gonna cut it out. When this shrinks down, you'll see any place that's left blank will be kind of a frosted color. It's not gonna be white, it's not gonna be entirely transparent, it's gonna be somewhere in between. I wanna get his party hat in there. We have another question. We have another question because we're live, you can ask questions. Elizabeth wants to know, can you use Sharpie marker or do colored pencils work better? Um, and the name again? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, sorry, because we had an Eliza. Hi Elizabeth, um, Elizabeth's asking, can you use Sharpies or do colored pencils work better? I like a combination of the two. I like Sharpie on the front and colored pencil on the back. And the reason is when the shrinky dink shrinks and the plastic becomes much, much denser, you basically get a double layer. You can kind of see some depth in there and hopefully we'll be able to show that to you on the camera once everything shrinks and you'll be able to see it. So it gives a really cool effect. And that's why I like to use the rough and ready kind of shrinky dink, the one that's the frosted, because it's the only shrinky dink that has the textured back, which will take the colored pencil. Otherwise, um, some of the other ones that they make where it's glossy on both sides or it's white and not transparent, you only use Sharpie on that. So it's totally up to your preference, but I like to use a combo of the two. Good question. You can see like how saturated these colors are, which is really fun. I'm almost done with my crazy green tiger here. All right, once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna cut him out using some sharp scissors. So you can see it's kind of like that. I want to leave some space down here where his feet are to have little ends. And you could draw them in if you were afraid you were going to forget. I could draw in some little tabs. And those are going to be to place the tiger into the cake so he stands up. But I'm, just not, I'm not going to draw them. I'm just going to remember to cut around them. And I'm not cutting right on the line. I'm giving this a little bit of a margin. It's going to be really small when this shrinks anyway, so I'm not worried about it. And all these little scraps, you can save these, especially if you want to make the Shrinky Dink jewelry, which is Nicole's class. There's a link for it in the comments. These little pieces are perfect for that because it, they shrink to be really, really tiny. You can even make buttons as long as you put a hole in them before you bake them. You could make ornaments for the holidays. I think that would be super fun. I love the cake topper idea because it's something that you can create a, a tradition around. It's something that you could use year after year, maybe Every year you create a new cake topper um, as a surprise for somebody, and then you have a little collection of them. And if you are wanting to make a really fancy cake to go with your cake topper, you can check out our Wilton's classes. Allison posted a link for those earlier. Really, this would be a fabulous topper for any of the classes they teach. We've got some really cool um, naked cakes, and we've got some textured iced cakes, and a lot of fun things. You can put this on a cupcake too, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Now one thing I would say is, you're gonna see this when we put it in the toaster oven, but this is going to curl up, and you're gonna feel like you're gonna have a heart attack because it's pretty terrifying, and then it's gonna relax all while it's in the oven. Now if you're gonna do something like an octopus or something that has a lot of really fine little tendrils to it, when it curls up, those little tendrils can get tangled and they'll relax, but they may stick to one another. So if you were doing something like an octopus, I would probably try to find a way to connect some of those tentacles or something so that you have more wider pieces and not a ton of little skinny pieces. So that's what this guy looks like my little blue tiger. He's gonna go onto my baking sheet, which is lined with parchment paper, which is great, Wilton makes that, and um, it's super easy to cut out and put in a liner. He goes straight on there. 
The packaging recommends that the color side goes up, but I find that I like the Sharpie side up. Both sides have um, ink on them. One has the Sharpie ink and the other has the colored pencil wax on it. So whatever you prefer, you might want to experiment depending on what kind of materials you're using. I'm going to put this back on and making sure it's set to 325 because that's what my packaging says. And I'm just going to pop it in and I'm not going to actually use a timer. Instead, I want to watch it. It can bake from anywhere from one to three minutes depending on the size of your image and how dense it is. And it's going to curl up and be crazy. And then it's going to relax and then we'll take it out and let it cool before we put it into one of our desserts. So now we watch. We have some fantastic comments that I'd like to mention. We've got some good comments. And don't forget to like and share with your friends and follow us on mobile so you get notifications for our live shoots. We do this every Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah, so Jennifer mentioned, she said, I'm thinking of making zipper pulls with this application. Oh, cool. Jennifer says that this would be a great application for zipper pulls. And I totally agree. That would be awesome. It's back to school time. You want to freshen up your wardrobe or do something cool on your kid's backpack. It would be super fun. You could even have, do, have kids draw, and then you could color them in. There could be some combo. And you could cut them out and put them on zipper pulls. I love that idea. Good job, Jennifer. Ooh, it's shrinking up. Ooh. Looks crazy in here. <laughs> It'll relax, though. It's getting tiny. It's kind of magical to watch that. That's why I really like doing it in a toaster oven, doing this whole process. It's small and contained and easy to do, but it also um, allows you to kind of watch it happen, which is really fun. Now it's relaxing. If you have something that doesn't feel like it's relaxing and you're a little worried, like that last leg, I can go in there with a little wooden stick and let it sit down. I'm going to give it maybe five more seconds in there. I'm going to pull it out and let it cool. I want to show you one trick in case it doesn't relax all the way. All right, we have another question. We have a question. Give me one sec. I'm going to pull this out first. This stage is really important because if you have something that is lumpy, bumpy, has not unfurled all the way, this is where you need to press it down. So put another piece of parchment paper on top and use a spatula and just give it a good little press. If something does not relax and it's hardened before you can get it to relax, you can put it back in the toaster oven for a couple of minutes until it softens, should relax again, or you can pull it out and give it a press with a spatula. This is all very hot right now, but it does cool quickly. So I'm gonna pull this off and just let it cool on the table. This little tray is hot, so I'm just gonna pop it back in the toaster oven so I don't burn myself on accident. And then Allison has another question. Good question. You know what? Shrink eating paper, <laughs> I feel like it's something if you're over 30, you know about. Um, I did call the local art supply store and had to explain numerous times what a shrink eating was. And it made me feel one, very old, and two, a little sad because how fun is this that the world doesn't know about shrink eatings? I totally think it's something that like resurfaces during the holidays when all those like nostalgic gifts come out. But I actually got my paper on Amazon um, because that was easy to find. I chose the Rough and Ready, that's the one with the frosted backside that uses colored pencil. I use Sharpie on the front, but it also comes an inkjet printable version, a double gloss version, so it's gloss on both sides, Sharpie only, and a version that is solid white, which I think might be the version, it's possibly the version that Nicole uses in the Shrinky Dink earrings, which makes these little swallows. You could do a cake topper with any of those. Um, check out Amazon, but maybe check out your local craft store. It's possible that one of the big craft stores would also carry this and just ask for some help if you can't find it. <gasps> oh my god, how cute is this? Can you guys all see that? My little blue tiger. It's going to go with my orange tiger. And they're going to have a party. Do we have any other questions? Yes, we have one new question at this point from Eliza. Hi, Eliza. She wants to know, is a toaster oven the same as a normal oven? I am from Australia and not familiar with this term. Um, Eliza's asking. She's from Australia, so thank you for tuning in. I'm not sure what time it is on your end of the world, but it's probably either very early or very late. And she's asking, what is a toaster oven? And a toaster oven is like a regular oven. Um, it's very, very tiny and compact. It's often something that you have in like a college dorm room or your office kitchen for bagels and such. 
um, you could do this in a regular oven and either will work. I think this is great because you can really keep an eye on it because it's got this little tiny door that you can open in the process and you're not blasted with heat in the same way that you are with like a home oven, which is big. Good question. Any more questions? I would say though what's awesome is the consistency. I drew these two tigers in exactly the same way and they shrunk to the same size, which is nice. So they're saying it's about a third of the size. It feels a little bit smaller than that, but I still really love the size. I think this is great for a cupcake or a set of cupcakes or a set of cakes. And we're gonna put this into a little cake. And I wanna put both the tigers in here. <laughs> And you can see those little tabs are super handy so that it can stand upright. I didn't have to glue a toothpick on the back or make some kind of adjustment. I just built it into my design before I baked. Remember, if you are doing the jewelry or something that you want to hang this, let's say you want to make a mobile, which would be super cute, you need to punch a hole in the shrinky dink foam before you put it into the toaster oven. So I thought this was like the perfect project to please my younger self and also to please my adult self. Um, this kind of stuff is super fun for drawing and tracing. You can do it with kids and it's something that you can pull out um, every single year and make birthdays really special or any other type of celebration. Remember we do these live shoots at 4 p.m. PST every Tuesday and Thursday and you can like and share it on Facebook. If you're on mobile you can hit that follow button and if you missed it you can watch it on our videos tab and check it out on CBTV tomorrow. We have, and one, more we have one more question. <laughs> Oh, good question. Michelle's asking, do you need to wash them? Um, I don't think you need to wash them. These are pretty like hand wash. You'd want to treat them delicately like you would any kind of cake topper. And uh, so don't like don't run them in the dishwasher or something like that. Just give them a little hand wash. And you could even probably just wipe them off with a paper towel. The heat sets all of the ink and colored pencils and so forth. I wouldn't put marker pen on the part that's gonna go into the cake. So I, I don't wanna draw the tab so much and make that permanent. I like that that's just the regular plastic and I'm not worried about it. People eat with plastic utensils all the time, so you, you should be good. Good questions, you guys. Thanks for tuning in.